Shut it, man! Brick to the head, boys. Today's video should be a short one. I should have it all sorted by lunch and have enough time to get back to your girl's house for my weekly wing massage. I'd like to thank your girl's favourite, Austin Cross, for requesting today's Ring of the Hawk video on Patreon. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, <coughs> shove their name in the comment section, Jack! Okay, okay, the coachman Jonathan, does he need a punch to the abdomen? So yeah, today's video should be easy. The coach was just a goofy backstage interviewer, wasn't he? Probably a couple of joke matches against The Rock here and there and we'll be done. Wait, what? He had 29 matches! Someone find me a bridge and throw off Austin Cross with a toss. So I have to sit through 29 matches of rubbish. This is going to be brutal. This guy right here, I have to watch in 29 matches. He wasn't even a trained wrestler and he learnt on the job. Oh, he was trained by Chris Benoit. <laughs> I'm clutching at straws here. This is going to suck no matter what. Let's get it over and done with. Match 1 Raw, Jerry the King Lawler vs Jonathan Coachman. Even in 2003, the King was still being used to give wrestlers their first matches. Lots and lots of stalling, just please hurry up. Lawler punches him once and the coach falls down. Coach grits his teeth and dumps in his nappy of anger. Now the King hits a scoop slam. The coach puts him in a headlock for a few seconds before the King backdrops him. The match is interrupted by Al Snow with a microphone. He tells the coach to give up, but the coach doesn't. King puts him in a wrist lock as Al Snow keeps telling him to quit. What is this, an I quit match or something? Coach starts arguing with Al Snow and he shoves him away. King smacks the coach from behind and throws him back in the ring. Suddenly Al Snow jumps the King and smashes him into the ring post. The coach hits a diving elbow in the ring and that's the three. The coach wins with an elbow drop. Well, I can honestly say I've seen it all now. I can also honestly say I never want to see him wrestle again, but we've got 28 more of these to watch. That being said, he took a couple of moves here which I wasn't expecting, so I'll be kind on his debut and give him a D. Match 2, Unforgiven 2003 Tag Match. Winners get to be the commentators for Raw. Al Snow and Jonathan Coachman vs Jim Ross and The King. Not looking forward to this and with no commentary it makes this match even worse. Even the start is clunky as The King tries to get a sneaky roll up on Al Snow. Fortunately for me, Snow and The King will wrestle most of this match so I can skip most of it. Eventually the coach unwisely makes a blind tag. Al Snow doesn't think it's a good idea and neither do I. The coach whips the king into the corner. Jesus, is there really so little for me to say that I'm calling an Irish whip into the corner? He does somehow get a two on some corner kicks now. The coach does try a bronco buster, which he misses. The king starts smacking him around the ring. He hits a scoop slam followed by the middle rope fist drop. Al Snow breaks up the pin. Now Jim Ross has the tag. He kicks Al Snow in the nutsack and chops him out of the ring. Jim Ross hits coach with a running clothesline from behind. Now some weak punts. JR mounts him and punches him, but the ref is distracted by King and Snow on the outside. Chris Jericho randomly rushes the ring and he drop kicks Jim Ross. And that's the three. What a horrible match. The best thing about the coach so far is his rap music. It has a really nice beat. Coach is undefeated so far, but it's still an ass. Match three, Raw. Country whipping match for the Raw commentator's position. Jonathan Coachman versus Jim Ross. Not again. Ross with three whips, which makes the coach bail from the ring. Coach tries to get back into the ring, but he's whipped more. Coach is an idiot and he's distracted by the fans on the outside, so Jim Ross sneaks up from behind and hits him. They both make it to the ring and Ross misses a shot, which enables the coach to rain down on him. This is really dragging. I can't stand much more of this. Coach starts pulling off his shirt. Ross is embarrassed, so he smacks him in the slash zone. Ross takes away the coach's shirt and whips him. The leader of the Grey Crew, Eric Bischoff, tries to interfere. Ross deals with him. And Jim Ross wins with the Stone Cold Stunner. One of the worst matches I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of bird turd. It's an S. Match 4, Raw. If Coach loses, he loses his job. Jerry the King Lawler versus the Coach. King jumps Coach before the bell. Apparently, he needs an advantage. He punches Coach, who somehow keeps his sunglasses on. The King with a backdrop suplex now, and those glasses are staying on. How? Okay, now the glasses are off. The King hits the second rope fist drop, and this match is over in one minute. At least it was short, unlike the other matches. It's an S. The crowd and Jim Ross sing goodbye as the coach cries. Unfortunately for me, this was not the end of his run. Not by a long shot. Match 5, Raw, no DQ match. Jonathan Coachman with Mark Henry and Theodore Long versus Bill Goldberg. As this is a no DQ match, Coach just lets Mark Henry get on with it. Eventually, Coach is left alone with Goldberg and he's aggressively thrown from the top rope. 
Goldberg hits the spear on the coach. And you know what comes next, the jackhammer. Goldberg pins him with his foot on his chest. Look, what I will say is the coach's facial expressions and mannerisms made you hype to see Goldberg destroy him. So coach gets a D for this J.O.B. Match 6, Backlash 2004, Jonathan Coachman vs Tajiri. What a random match. Wow, the coach starts out with an arm drag. Now the coach with a go behind and he dodges a Tajiri kick. Tajiri starts landing some of his kicks now so the coach wisely bails. Tajiri accidentally kicks the ring post and now the coach is working on the buzzsaw's leg. The coach hits a shin breaker and he follows it by shoving Tajiri down. Coach is actually doing a decent job working on the leg. Tajiri now reverses a coach slam into a pin for a two. Coach chop blocks him to stay on top of the match. The coachman now have a leg bar submission whilst holding onto the ropes cheating. Tajiri eventually kicks him off with his free leg. Coach decides to try and go high risk now but of course he falls in his nutsack. Tajiri has him in a sort of tree of woe and he baseball slide kicks him. Tajiri's really back on top in this one now with the handspring back elbow and a low drop kick. He tries to follow it with a sunset flip which the coach blocks. He rolls Tajiri up with his feet on the ropes but the ref catches him cheating, I thought it was over. The tarantula from Tajiri now. He looks to finish it with a buzzsaw kick but he can't because Garrison Cade appears on the apron. He punches Tajiri into a coach pin and believe it or not that is the free. Props to the coach, he has definitely been training a lot. This actually resembled a wrestling match and not a joke. It's a C for improving. Match 7, Raw, Tag Match. The coach and Garrison Cade versus Eugene and Chris Benoit. Once again, luckily for me, the coach isn't doing much wrestling here. He gets the tag in against Benoit eventually. Coach can't do a thing to his trainer and he starts getting chopped. Benoit slams him into the corner and the coach collapses. Moments later, Benoit dodges his punch and he hits a German suplex. Not once, not twice, but thrice and it sure wasn't nice. Benoit hits the diving headbutt, but it's not over because the crowd are chanting for Eugene. Eugene also hits the diving headbutt, and that is how this one ends. Absolutely horrible from the coach, oh, did literally no. nothing, it's an S. Match 8, Bad Blood 2004, Jonathan Coachman vs Eugene. This match is obviously a comedy match. Eugene lies on the floor in a ball to freak the coach out. The coach starts rolling him around the ring like a pool. He eventually outsmarts the coach and sucks him into an arm drag pin for a two. Now Eugene and the coach are on all fours next to each other. Eugene starts riding him around the ring. Now the coach is running the ropes whilst Eugene flirts with a lady at ringside. He cuddles a bear. Coach clubs him from behind. They come back to the ring where Eugene does a body scissors into a rolling pin. Now Eugene is doing junkyard dog impressions and he hits that big head into the coach. Eugene motions that he's pissing on him afterwards. The coach starts calling for some help from the back. It's a lady in a bikini with a tray of cookies. Eugene falls for this ploy and the coach smacks him from behind. Uh, back in the ring now, the coachman tries to smash Eugene's head into the turnbuckles, but this move makes him hawk up. He hits atomic drops and drop kicks. He also does the aeroplane spin into the Green Bay plunge. Garrison Cade's back again now, but not for long because coach accidentally smacks him. Now Eugene hits the rock bottom, and the people's elbow follows that, and it's over. A decent comedy match, but look at this terrible stunner on Garrison Cade. Another stunner on the coach after the bell. It's a D because Coach played his part. I just feel like anyone could be doing this role though. He's just there to pull funny faces. Match 9, Vengeance 2004, tag match. The Coach and Garrison Cade versus Tajiri and Rhino. Coach seems like he's going to start this match with Rhino, but he takes one look at the man beast and changes his mind. Just like all the other tag matches, Coach doesn't do anything. This time slightly different though, as he attempts a cheap shot on Tajiri from the ring apron, but he gets kicked by the buzzsaw. The Coach is actually in the match now. He gets Tajiri in the corner and barges into his back. Who knows what this next move is supposed to be from the coach, but incredibly now coach hits a scoop slam. He can't celebrate because he gets kicked from the floor. Coach hits him with an elbow drop, the legendary move that beat Jerry Lawler. It doesn't beat Tajiri though and he fights back with the tarantula. Coach wants to prevent the tag to Rhino but Tajiri boots him in the face. Rhino's in now, he suplexes the coach and also hits a belly to belly. Cade breaks up the pin. Tajiri makes a blind tag and he hits the handspring back elbow, two for the price of one. Cade is sprayed with the mist and gored by Rhino, so he's now dead. When the coach turns around, Tajiri kicks him and that's the free. How does he keep getting on pay-per-view with these matches? It's a D, oh, not no. much to say. Match 10, 3 on 2 handicap. Rhino and Tajiri versus La Resistance and the coach who jumped them on the ramp. Coach does a weak slap to Rhino from the ring apron. Coach is just yawning away, and I am too. Eventually Rhino beats up La Resistance and he clotheslines the coach down. Rhino gores coach and it would normally be over but La Resistance is still here and they put him away with a double team move. No, it's an S. Coach's no. participation in this one was the least so far if that's even possible. That's one third of the match is done and he's really going to need to improve if he doesn't plan on shoving it in the zone.
Match 11, Raw. Impromptu six-man elimination match. Rhino versus Tajiri versus Shelton Benjamin versus The Hurricane versus Christian versus The Coach. Coach tries to be wise and stay out of it, but when Tajiri hand springs into him, it somehow counts as a tag. Christian pushes Coach into the gore and he's been eliminated. And of course, he's first out. Match is won by Shelton Benjamin with a T-bone suplex. There's no need to Shut guess, it. it's an S. Match 12, Jonathan Coachman versus Randy Orton. JR trips up the coach as he tries to run away. The coach is now hiding behind a crowd barrier. He's not strong enough to push past the crowd when he wants to run away and now Autumn has him in the ring. Autumn drops him across the ropes, nutsack first, and he makes him ride the rope. Autumn uses coach's back now to walk to the top rope. He doesn't do anything once he's up there and instead he pokes coach in the eyelid. The RKO from Autumn ends it in one minute. Ow. Pointless S. I get that he isn't here to win matches, but I don't see how it makes anyone look impressive by beating this guy. Match 13, the coach versus the man beast Rhino. Coach smacks Rhino as he springs into the ring. These are the first punches that coach has connected with in a while. He starts arguing with the referee, and when he turns around, he's hit with the gore. Jesus, this is bad, and we're not even at the halfway point. So many matches that suck Sonny Siaki's ass. He's gonna need to bring in Solo at this rate. Match 14, Raw. Number one contenders battle royal. Why the hell is coach in there? I generally wasn't sure I was watching the right match because I couldn't see the coaches in the match, but he is in there. He surprisingly isn't out first. He outlasts wrestlers such as Viscera, Tomko and Rhino. Coach is eliminated by Benoit during the advert break because he's not important. It's pretty funny how he got eliminated though. He didn't want to get chopped anymore by Chris Benoit, so he dived away off the ring apron to eliminate himself. The match is won by both Benoit and Edge who fall off the apron at the same time. It's a D for making me chuckle. Match 15, Royal Rumble 2005, the Royal Rumble match. Who thinks it's a good idea to keep giving Jonathan Coachman a chance at a title shot? Taz calls this out and says that he's a nerd and doesn't deserve to be in here. The coach hits Benoit from behind and tries to hide in the corner. Benoit grits what's left of his teeth with anger. Coach desperately clings to the rope as Benoit beats him. Now Jericho has joined Benoit in attacking him. Nothing's happening, the coach is crying in the corner. Annoyingly for me, the coach lasts for 13 whole minutes. It seems everyone's forgotten he's here. Batista remembers though, and he hits coach with the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam. Ric Flair eliminates the coach. I'm still shocked he lasted 13 minutes. The match is won by Batista. Coach spent the whole match pissing in his knickers Shut in the me. corner. It's an S. Match 16, Taboo Tuesday 2005. The fans are given the choice of a verbal debate, an arm wrestling match, or a street fight. Unsurprisingly, they chose a street fight. The coach will be accompanied by Gold Dust and Vader. Why? To take on the World Heavyweight Champion. What the hell is this match doing on pay-per-view? So once again, it's really a handicap match with the coach too scared to do anything. He does get punched by Batista, but not much more to say. Now weapons get involved. Vader and Gold Dust pin Batista down whilst Coach whips him with a belt. Batista kicks them off and starts clotheslining everyone down. Batista now has the belt. With Gold Dust and Vader taken out of the match, it doesn't go much longer. Batista slaps Coach and then picks him up to hit the Batista bomb for the free. A terrible pay-per-view match and very worthy of an S. Seeing as we've just got across the halfway point, I think this is a good time to talk about his mic skills because Coach had a lot of time on the mic. He played on-screen management roles and was a right-hand man to Eric Bischoff and later Vince McMahon. He has a confident delivery and he doesn't really mess anything up ever, but he's just not memorable. Considering how much mic time he had, he's got no catchy lines. If he hadn't existed, I reckon they would have coped just fine. He's a solid hand and that's it. Match 17, Raw, Intercontinental Title Match. What? <laughs> Impromptu match here. The nature boy Ric Flair takes on Jonathan Coachman. Coach scores an elbow to the eye which somehow floors Ric Flair. He takes his top off as people cringe and he chokes Flair with his shirt. Flair uses some of his usual tactics to get back on top. He nails several chops. Ric Flair now with the knee drop. Flair punches the coach in the slash zone and here's the figure four for the tap out win. Coach just doesn't seem to be progressing. I know it's Ric Flair and he's not likely to get much in against him, but I'm disappointed that the most we've seen from 17 oh, no. matches is a scoop Shut slam. Me. It's an S. Match 18, Raw. Royal Rumble qualifier. The coach, not again, versus the king. How many times have they been in matches together at this point? Coach starts with a shoulder block and this gets him a one count. Irish whip into the corner, but coach can't hit a slow motion bronco buster. The coach desperately tries to hit a suplex now, but that would be too advanced for him. The king suplexes him instead. Now some crazy music starts playing and the spirit squad are here. Laura is rightfully distracted by all of this. They start doing cheers for the coach. King wants to hit his fist drop, but the shove it squad blow an air horn at him. And the coach gets the roll up win whilst holding the ropes. 
Simply horrible. I can't take much more of this shoving. Nothing's getting better. Slater How is it possible shoving. he's had this many matches and it's never improved? But I'm sure out of 29 matches, there has to be one match which is at least passable. Match 19, Royal Rumble 2006, the Royal Rumble match. This one doesn't go well either, and doesn't go as well as the last Rumble match. And that's not saying much, because all he did last time was lie on the floor pissing his knickers for 13 minutes. He tries to attack the Big Show, which doesn't have any effect. The crowd chant, you suck. Big Show chokes him and shoves him out of the ring. Jonathan Coachman lasted 30 seconds, so it's an S. The match is won by Ray Ray. The only real question is just how far into the shove it zone the coach is going to fall. Keep watching to find out. Match 20, Raw, Shawn Michaels vs Jonathan Coachman. How the hell has he wrestled, and I say that word in quotations, against so many wrestling legends? Coachman plays his gimmick so well that he couldn't have looked more like a jobber if he tried. And he is one, so maybe he's just being himself. The bell rings and HBK goes to get a swimming mask, not sure why. They say that it's a skull cap, but I didn't know they were made of stretchy plastic. Why Shawn Michaels want a skull cap? Michaels starts punching him slowly and then he scores a knockout blow. Now he pulls down his pants. Coach hits a thumb to the eyelid, but this is no effect. Michaels now with the inverted atomic drop. Shawn Michaels hits the elbow drop. The spirit squad are back. Michaels deals with them all with ease. Sweet chin music on Jonathan Coachman. And of course, this one's over. Wait, no, Umaga's here and he hits a Samoan drop, which I was completely okay with. The match is thrown out. And of course, it's an S. Sometimes when I'm driving along, I like to stop my car, wave at random pedestrians. Not because I'm lonely, not because I'm trying to be funny, but because I want a fight. Hopefully I'll get hit in the head and forget Ow. these matches happened. Match 21, Raw Main Event. The fans had the choice to vote if it would be Booker T, The Big Show, or The Coach taking part in this match. And I'm not sure if this thing is legit, but The Coach gets a 74% fan vote. He looks like he's dumping tears in his nappy. He'll take on John Wiener. Coachman tries to leave and he's dragged back to the ring by Cena. Big Show spears Cena and Booker T joins in with a beatdown. Coach is now very happy as the bell rings, but he only gets a two from the beatdown. He manages to land a few elbows in the corner before Cena wakes up. Big match, John takes him down with a double leg. Ten punches from Cena now, followed by the powerbomb. John Cena tells the coach, you can't see me, and there it is, the FU. Cena then makes him tap out to the STFU. I'm losing the will to live. I get that he's just here to do the J-O-B, but does he have to do it in such a boring, predictable way every time? He's not even competitive with anyone. At least this makes my video editing quicker because it's an S for every oh, no. single match. Match 22, Raw Main Event. This one will not be essential viewing if you're looking to complete your Jonathan Coachman catalogue of matches. Four on one handicap match, The Coachman, Johnny Nitro, Armando Estrada and Umaga will take on Cena. Nothing to say about this one. Cena flips and starts beating everyone up with steel chairs. He doesn't hit the coach of a steel chair, but he does hit the FU. Then he beats up Kevin Federline, who I genuinely had no idea who he was, so I looked him up, and it turns out he has the worst red rap album of all time. Just skip this one, it's an S. Oh no, match 23, John Cena, who is beaten up by the great Carly before the match, versus Jonathan Coachman, who's definitely going to screw this up, just like every coach match. Coachman gets a two count from Carly's beating. Cena is back up now, so Umaga will beat him up. Oh, and the match is then thrown out after about 30 seconds. Ow. Coachman helps Umaga put Cena for a table. I'm fine with him doing jobs, but couldn't an actual wrestler benefit from his spot more? Match 24, Raw. Jonathan Coachman with Umaga and the McMahons versus Bobby Lashley. Umaga has really weird hair here. It looks like he went to the same barbers as Wes Pisco. And by the barbers, I mean a public toilet where people piss on your face. The coach smacks Lashley, who no-sells it. He sort of slaps back and the coach falls down. Lashley with some cross faces on the ropes now. After some more smacks, Lashley gets coach up in a torture rack and then he drops down for backbreaker. Bobby Lashley hits the spear for the free. I was kind of enjoying this one while it lasted. It was the only match I've seen where it looks like coach was taking a real life beating. Oh, no. It's a D. Match 25, Raw. Tables match. Jonathan Coachman, once again versus Cena. Cena tells the coach he knows nothing about respect. He has the FU ready but changes his mind and puts the coach down and punches him. Coachman is rolling around on the mat like a worm in the mud. Cena puts on the STFU. Coach is tapping, but it's a tables match. Moments later, Cena does put him through the table with the FU. Just kill me. This is such a waste of the Hawks oh, time. No! I could be sharpening my beak or dropping bird turd in your girl's hair. Probably be an upgrade, but instead I'm stuck covering this. Match 26, Raw. Things somehow get even worse now, if that's possible. Jonathan Coachman takes on Hornswoggle, who looks really intimidated by the coach for no reason at all. The special referee is Mick Foley, so you know which way this one's going to go. 
Hornswoggle humps Foley's leg. Why am I even calling this match? Hornswoggle kicks and drop kicks him. Coach now has him by the beard and he attempts a slam but Swoggle bites him. Now Foley throws Horny into his nutsack. Another drop kick from Hornswoggle now followed by an ass drop. Unfortunately for Hornswoggle he misses his bottom rope elbow drop. Foley isn't letting the coach capitalise. Coach decides to take out Foley which is a bad idea. Coach grabs a chair but Foley wakes up and stops him. One punch from Foley and now it's the mandible claw. But it's a special one because Hornswoggle does it on his nutsack. The match ends with a tadpole splash. I think I'm going to grab my brick and give my head a smash. Oh, match 27, Smackdown. Wow, he's on Smackdown for the first time. That's the most interesting thing I've had to say on this video. Special referee match again. This time it's Hornswoggle. The coach will take on Brick Foley. I feel like I've lost at least 20 points of my IQ from this video. 10 from how stupid it was and 10 from smacking myself in the head repeatedly. Hornswoggle crouches down behind coach and then Foley shoves him over. Foley and Hornswoggle both take turns smacking the coach in the corner. Hornswoggle checks that the coach can still see and then he jabs him in his eyelids. Foley and Hornswoggle with elbow drops now. I just don't care, I want this to end. There isn't going to be a single good match in this run is there? I'm accepting it now. Foley with the mandible claw followed by the tadpole splash from Hornswoggle and that is most certainly the three. This is making me feel like getting diarrhea of the brain so I can shit this match out of my memory. Four cod liver oil tablets, oh, one no. nitro and a bowl of Tropicana orange juice. Gone off. Like the food in my cupboards. Because I have to waste my time watching 29 pointless matches instead of eating. So my chances of puking or crap in this match out of my memory are about nil. There's no need to squeal. Match 28, Raw. Two on one handicap, no DQ match. Carlito Caribbean Cool and Jonathan Coachman will take on... <sighs> Hornswoggle. I don't want to watch this. He has the APA with him. And when I say with him, I mean they just fight Carlito and the coach. JBL hits him with a net breaker. Hornswoggle hits a sort of shining wizard. Now JBL, the clothesline from hell. They assist Hornswoggle with his tadpole splash, and that's the three. It's not funny. You shouldn't be laughing. There's nothing funny about this. If you're laughing, you deserve to be punched square in the gut. Did anyone really care about this? Because I sure didn't give two turds. You'd have more fun dating a dog with diabetes, and I'm not talking about your sister. Match 29, final match. Thank God. This has been brutal. Two on one handicap match. The game Triple H versus William Regal and Coachman. How has he had so many matches with the stars? Don't care now, I've nearly done. Triple H looks like Raven. Coach has lost to Hornswoggle now, so why would he have a chance against Triple H? The game smacks the coach down and he beats Regal up on the outside. Coach tries to jump in, but Trips isn't having it. Regal kicks Triple H into the ring pole, and then he screams at the coach, get in the ring, you pillock. We officially have a new high point of this video, and it wasn't our guy being funny. Triple H hawks up and hits them both down with ease again. Regal realises that he's gonna lose being stuck with the coach, so he fetches his brass knuckles. He can't use them, but now the coachman has them. Triple H notices that he has them and the coach dumps diarrhea in his nappy of fear as he looks up at the game. He gives them to Triple H who taps him on the head with them. Hey, isn't that a DQ? Triple H hits the pedigree for the three. Thank God it's done. I still think Coach should have a DQ win over Triple H though. Coach was used a lot as a corporate stooge throughout his time in the WWE so he did have lots of mic time. I just never found myself caring about his character. I found him a bit bland and boring and I didn't really care if he got beaten up or not. With the amount of mic time he had, he could have got to McMahon levels. Certainly leader of the Grey Crew levels. But I don't know, I just saw him as a joke and didn't see the point in him. This has to be the worst episode of Ring of the Hawk of all time. I know he's not an in-ring competitor, but then he's had 29 matches, so surely that means he is one. Literally one match out of 29 was not pointless. The one with Tajiri where it looked like he was trying to become a real wrestler. Then he turned into a joke who for some reason constantly had main events against the stars. I'm not sure what any of those guys were getting from beating him up. And by the end of his run, he was a total comic relief joke. Let's keep this brief. This one was bad and it gave me grief. He can shove it in the zone and steal the bottom spot like a thief. And if you don't agree with that, I'll knock out your teeth.